Okay, in this short video, I'm going to show you how to read the T distribution table. And again, you can find this table um, online. You can print off a copy um, in the back of your textbook or in your e-text. Um, but you will need to have a copy of this T distribution um, to work with um, independent T, single sample T, and repeated measures T. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind here. This is your T distribution, right? Um, and I, I call it either, um, I, I call it T crit. So that's what I'm going to refer to mine as because this is what's going to help you find is, is the critical value of T or T crit. In some textbooks, you're going to see it as um, CVT, so critical value of T, but I was taught T crit. So I'll try to use both of those interchangeably depending on what your textbook um, says. Okay, so we have a couple things going on here. Um, first, I want you to look at is degrees of freedom over here, right? And just keep in mind that degrees of freedom equals um, n minus 1 for single sample t. Okay, so we have um, t distribution here, and so we have our n minus 1 as our degrees of freedom. So if someone says, oh, and then the next thing I need to worry about is the alpha level, okay? So somewhere over here, write alpha, right, on your paper, on your chart. Okay, and so you have a couple different alpha um, sections. You have one for the proportion in um, like one tail, so you're running a one tail test, right? And then on the bottom, you have proportion in two tails. So think like it like kind of slides back and forth, right? So if I was to say, when I have um, 0 0.05 um, highlighted, right, that, that's the one we're going to use a lot. Sometimes you will use 0 0.01, sometimes you use 0 0.1, um, 0 0.005, it's in one tail. But I would say 95% of the time we're going to use alpha at um, 0 0.05, so that's why I highlighted it. Okay, so um, say I have 25 people in my study. Well, um, so my N, oops, let's go with black. Um, my N equals um, 25. Well, if my N equals 25 and degrees of freedom is N minus 1, my DF or my degrees of freedom is then 24. Okay, so I'm going to find 24 over here under the DF column, the degrees of freedom. So right about there for my degrees of freedom, 24. Right. And then I'm going to say it's a um, one tail test, right? So my alpha is going to be set at, let's go 0 0.05, and let's do a one tail test. Okay. So alpha 0 0.05, again, in this um, 0 0.05 column, right? Um, and and uh, so that's just for a two tail test. I'm sorry, so let's go a one tail test. So um, let's go here, let's go 0 0.05 in um, one tail right it's going to give me this column so i'm looking in just this column so again 0 0.05 is my alpha and i have um just one tail my degrees of freedom is 24 and so what i do is i just go okay 24 and i carry it all the way over right so with alpha being set 0 0.05 one tail with 25 people in my study, my T crit, right, my critical value of T is 1.711, okay? Graphically, this is how it looks. So I have a T distribution, right, and I have only a one tail test. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to find this critical region right here, okay? So my T crit is going to be right here. My T crit is 1.711. Okay, if my T obtained falls somewhere over here in this critical region, I can reject the null. But if my T obtained falls outside the critical region, somewhere over here, over here, or even in one tail test way over here, I would still fail to reject that null. Okay, so um, let's do a different one. Let's go, um, we're going to have 10 people in this study, right? So um, n equals 10, and degrees of freedom is then going to equal 9, right? So I need to find that, and it's right about um, there, right? Um, but this time, let's have our alpha level set at 0 0.05 um, two tail, right? So this time, we're going to split the alpha. So um, 0 0.05 two tail, um, degrees of freedom 9. So that's going to bring me all the way right there. So my T crit is now going to equal 2.262, um, 2, 
right? Or again, um, graphically, now I have a two-tail test. So I have one critical region here, one critical region here. So now I have two critical regions that um, that my uh, kind of the reject zone would be in, right? So my T crit is actually plus or minus negative. 2.262. So I have one T crit over here at negative 2.262, and I have one over here at positive 2.262. Right. So again, if my T obtained falls somewhere in this region, right, I fail to reject the null. But if my T obtained falls either greater than point or 2.262 or um, less than negative 2.262 that can then reject the null. Okay, so a couple things you got to keep in mind here. First, ask yourself, what's the sample size? Okay, and from the sample size, I can find out my degrees of freedom. And again, um, just n minus 1. Okay, then uh, so first thing, find um, your sample size. Second thing, find your degrees of freedom. Third thing, um, ask what the alpha level is. Right? Is my alpha level 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 or 0 0.005? What's my alpha? And then the, the last step is to find um, out if it's a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. If you have all that bits of information, if you know the, um, the sample size, if you know the degrees of freedom, you know this alpha level, and you know if it is um, a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, you can find your critical value of T. Again, so if I'm going to run an analysis and my degrees of freedom is 15, right? So I had 16 people in my study, and it's a, um, a two-tail test, alpha set at 0 0.05. I'm just going to go all the way over here, and, um, oops, so that one down there, sorry, is 2.130, right? Sometimes using a sheet of paper also helps to try to keep everything um, in line. So this one is 2.131. So again, uh, find out your sample size, degrees of freedom, your alpha level, and it's a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, and you can find your critical value of T.